So you have a 120 volt welder and you're wondering how thick of metal you can actually weld with it. Whether you're, what, depending on what process you're doing as far as stick, TIG, flux core, gas MIG, etc. I have an Eastwood MP140i. This is capable of up to 140 amps output on stick. I'm not sure what it is for gas MIG or for flux, but they kind of try to tell you that you can only weld 3 16 with it. But one of the important things about a 120 volt welder is that you need to have what's called a dead, well, not, you don't have to, but you kind of do depending on what it is you're doing. If you want to be able to weld up to quarter inch with this 120 volt welder, you can do so, but you have to put a little bit more work into your shop setup or your electrical run that you have powering the welder. So if you just plug this into a standard household outlet, wherever it may be, most likely it's gonna be in your garage, that outlet is only capable of supplying up to 15 amps. So that's what it's rated for. It can put out a little bit more for a short period of time, but it's going to blow the breaker. So if you have a 120 volt welder, like so, this is like one of the newer style inverter welders. And again, this is a multi-process uh, type of welder. You're probably running into problems when you try to weld something like 3 16 or even maybe even eighth inch, who knows, eighth inch to a quarter inch, you're popping the breaker, right? So you aren't even hitting what the duty cycle of the welder is at a given amperage output duty cycle meaning how long the welder can run, you know, a straight consistent or constant bead before it needs to stop and cool off for a period of time. So you're probably not even able to reach that because you're just drawing too much current from that 15 amp outlet to be able to even get to that point. So you're not able to basically get the full performance of the welder. That's because, and if you look at your actual manual that might've came with your, uh, with your unit, you'll see that they most likely recommend that you have a dedicated, what they call a dedicated 20 amp branch for your welder. Okay, so a 20 amp outlet, you have to uh, understand you know, of, of the basics of how um, an electrical circuit is laid out based off of what the outlet is and where your breaker is, etc. Okay, so your standard household outlet, which is your basic, like my garage open here, this, you know, this is a basic, 15 amp outlet that you find throughout your house, garage, whatever. So with this unit, they say that you need to have a, to get full performance, you need a dedicated 20 amp branch. And what that means is you need from your breaker box, you need a run of wires that is designed to be able to handle 20 amps minimum and nothing else can be on that circuit, okay? So basically what that means is you need to have at least 12 gauge wire running through your house to wherever the outlet is that the welder is gonna be powered by. 12 gauge wire is good for up to 20 amps, right? In my case, my breaker box is a long ways away, close to 200 feet, and I'm not an electrician. I do have the skills to do some things, you know, that are related to electrician type work, but I'm not an electrician. I'm not trying to be running, you know, wire through walls and that kind of stuff. So working alongside a friend of mine from high school who is an electrician, um, I was able to, you know, get a general understanding of what I would need to do and what was required versus like the code, electrical code, NEC code, uh, for what I need to do. So what I actually did was because my breaker box is so far away from where the shop is, what I used was 10 gauge wire, right? Which is good for up to 30 amps, right? And I installed an outlet directly at the breaker box because I didn't want to go through all of the requirements and, you know, labor and costs, etc., of running it through the building down to the shop. Basically, I installed an outlet that's directly connected with a piece of conduit to the bottom of the sub box, of the uh, panel, right? Where the breaker, all the breakers are. And there was one open slot left, okay? So basically, I installed 10 gate, about a foot, three, you know, one foot leads or so of 10 gauge, what's called 10 gauge stranded THHN wire, right? And that comes from a 30 amp, brand new uh, Siemens 30 amp breaker 
that's all by itself, meaning there's nothing else on that circuit besides that outlet that is at the bottom of the breaker box. So you have three leads of THHN stranded wire, 10 gauge, coming from you know your breaker and then your neutral bus, which is on one side. And this is not telling you guys to go do this, I'm just telling you what I did. Uh, you have a neutral bus and you have a ground bus in the box. So it's just you know three wires basically running to a 20 amp outlet, right? The 20 amp outlets are what you may see in your kitchen within like six feet of your, your sink or your bathroom within six feet of the sink or shower, whatever. This is like part of the electrical code that it requires this type of outlet, but you'll see it's the one that has like the, it's called a GFIC because my outlet's outside and it has to have its own breaker that, you know, is checked um, with circuitry inside of it. It checks itself to make sure that the breaker circuitry for the two buttons that are on it, you'll see it says test and the other one says reset. It's that kind of outlet if you've ever seen it before. And it has, it looks just like your standard, you know, 15 amp outlet, like the one up there, but it has one horizontal um, addition for a different style of plug. Or you can plug a 15 regular, you know, basic, whatever comes on any kind of device type of plug. You know, the I think it's called a 15.5P or something like that. But your basic outlet, it can plug into a 15 amp device or you can plug a 20 amp device into it. But it is turned, it has that extra horizontal one so that you can't plug a device that truly requires 20 amps into it because it'll have that kind of plug on it. So you, or so you can't, it has that plug on the, like the output of the device that requires 20 amps. So you can't plug it into a 15 amp circuit if you understand that. So say if this thing requires, but in, with welders, it's a little different with 120 volt welders, they still include, they put a 15 amp plug on it, even though technically to get the full output of the welder, you need a 20 amp circuit, dedicated circuit for the welder. It's a thing, like I spoke to Eastwood about this because it didn't really make sense to me. Like if this thing is a 20 amp machine that it can draw up to 20 amps, why doesn't it have a 20 amp plug on it? And they said it's just something that is like specific to 120 volt welders. That's what they do. They make it so that you can use it with like, you know, your standard outlet in your garage, which is kind of weird, but I'm sure that's like acceptable as far as the code and like, um, like UL listing requirements for like product consumer products and stuff. I'm sure that's, it's fine to do that. So, um, basically what I did was install a 20 amp outlet at my breaker box. 10 gauge wire, which is good for up to 30 amps again, and installed a 30 amp breaker, right? Because what can happen is when you uh, strike an arc with a welder, initially when it's starting that arc, it can spike the current up over that what it's actually rated that the machine can draw, in this case, 20 amps. It could pull 25, it could pull 27, maybe even a little more, but it's only for a short enough period of time that it's not gonna cause the breaker to trip, right? So in the NEC code for, you know, electrical wiring, there is a caveat or stipulation or, you know, kind of a waiver thing, a note stating that you can go up one breaker size for specifically for arc welders, for welders because of that, right? So you can have 12 gauge, which is good for up to 20 amps, and you can put in a 30 amp breaker for a welder if it is a dedicated branch for the welder. It's only for welders. In my case, I already have it wired, not just a breaker, but it's wired for 30 amps. So technically I could go to the next step up, but I don't need to because we know max this can, is rated for is 20 amps. So anyway, what I did was, the reason I did that is because number one, I don't want to spend the money for basically 600 feet because it's 200 feet away. So I need three wires, hot neutral ground, of 10 gauge, right? So I need 600, 200 of each. I didn't want to spend the money for a 500 foot roll plus a hundred foot roll because I already had 200 foot of 10 gauge extension cord, right? So what I did was install the outlet down there and then basically just ran a 10 gauge extension cord all the way down to the welder. And what I'm getting ready to do is to upgrade the power cable that comes out of the back of the welder to a 10 gauge as well, even though that's overkill. I've already tested it, even though this cable that comes out of here factory is 12 gauge, you know, because that's good for up to 20 amps. I'm going to upgrade it anyway. So I had no worries. I know I can max this thing out for the full duty cycle 
If you don't know what that is, Google it, duty cycle slash Walters, whatever, and you'll have an understanding what that means. It's basically how long you can run at a given, given output current, right, before the welder needs to stop and be cooled down for a certain amount of minutes. It's over the course of 10 minutes. Say you can, uh, a 30% duty cycle at 90 amps means that the welder can run for three minutes straight before it needs seven minutes to cool down. So you have to look that spec up for your particular welder and do a little research so you can actually understand it. But basically that just gives you an idea of how you can actually get a welder to weld up the, the maximum that it can truly do. A lot of them will say they stop at 3 16 but you can get excellent penetration on quarter inch with a 120 volt welder, right? You just have to have the proper, you know, gauge of wire, a welder that can actually do what it says it does. You know, you want a quality 120 volt welder, but it's very possible. So I'm, I've done some tests and I'm super comfortable with 3 16 up to quarter inch. You know what I mean? So it is possible. So it's something to look into, do some research, maybe talk to an electrician if you know any to get some advice on, you know, if it's necessary for you, depending on your application, what you're going to be welding. But it's something just, you know, I want to share with you guys because now I'm in here, you know, burning and this bad boy can do everything I need to build my car. But thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, I'm trying to build my channel up here for you low riders slash like new guys to the game, whatever. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.